Hello, 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 glorious people. Wherever you have to be located on this mystical world called Earth, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my channel on biblical topics. But I welcome you all to stay, whether you atheist, agnostic, anywhere in the middle, in the middle, you can stay to glean insight on what the Bible has to say. Just by looking at this screen, you know what my topic is for today. It's on that special number seven. Even if it's not talking about the Bible, the number seven is still sort of special. Seven wonders of the world, seven oceans, the seas on the planet. So, seven seems to afflict us in this natural realm. Not just in the Bible. But let's jump right into the Bible topic and see what it says about seven. But before I go further, I got some information. Seven is the natural number following six. Okay, we know that. And preceding eight. It is the only prime number preceding a cube. What that means, it's the only prime number preceding a cube. Two times two times two. Is eight. Three times three times three is 27. But it's the only prime number that's in front of a cube. So that makes it special. For instance, the seven classical planets and seven being the number of days in the week, as I said, is often just considered lucky in Western culture. I don't know about Islamic culture and other cultures, but in the Western world, is often seen as a lucky number. And it's often seen as a highly symbolic number. You know, the Western world is basically biblical-based people. Basically. Unlike Western culture and Vietnamese culture, the number seven is sometimes considered unlucky. See, in another culture, such as Asian, Islamic, the number seven is unlucky. So it has two cases. Some say it's lucky. Others say it's unlucky. But it's still special. It is the first number whose pronunciation contains more than one syllable, not counting O. Yeah, like for one, two, three, one syllable, four, five, six, one syllable, but seven. Okay, two syllables. So it is special. Now, starting off. Seven and the Bible. And the Israel, I know they like to say Jewish, but the, in the Jewish feast, there are seven holidays Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Yom Kippur, Feast of Weeks, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Tabernacles, or Booths. But the one that's made the most to do is the Passover. It may be Yom Kippur for Christmas time in the Western world. All right. Now we start to see what the Bible has to say. Let's come from Genesis chapter 20, 29, verse 20. So Genesis chapter 29, verse 20. So Jacob served seven years. Okay, that is seven. For Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of, of his love for her. So. To get the woman who he loved, who he adored, who, who he is struck by at first sight. He worked seven years. So, even back in his day, to complete a cycle, it probably was seven. Genesis chapter 33, verse 3. But he, but he himself passed on ahead of them and bowed down to the ground seven times. So back in that time, he didn't bow once, didn't bow twice, but seven, the number for completion, until he came near to his brother. So not just God, but humans, humans made the number seven. And just not for the days of weeks, in their particular actions, remember, he bowed seven times to show that he was completely humble. Yeah, because if he bowed seven times, you sure not be completely humble. Still in Genesis, 
Genesis chapter 50, verse 10. When they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation. And he observed seven days mourning for his father. So here, I believe it was Jacob or Israel who passed away. Joseph and his brothers was mourning their passing. So he mourned seven days, not one day like in, in, in most in the Western world, in most countries. They may give you one day to mourn, two days to mourn. No, but he mourned seven days for his father. Now, First Samuel chapter 33, verse 13. They took their bones and buried them on the tamsack tree at Joseph. And again, here we go. And they fasted seven days. So to the Hebrews, that number seven meant something to those ancient people. Didn't fast one day or two days. No, he fasted for basically one day. Week seven days again. See that number seven popping up. Let's keep seeing what the Bible has to keep saying. We jumping back to Genesis, and it's talking about God this time, the creation story. Genesis chapter two verse three. Then God blessed the seventh day, because that's the day He finished all His creation, and sanctified it, because in it He rested from all His work which God had created and made. So he created for all his creations, the universe, the earth, Pluto, Saturn, the different galaxies. He rested the seven, on the seventh day of, and it said, here you go, the seventh day of creation. So we don't know how long that day was. The seventh day of creation, he rested from all his work. Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land where you are entering to possess it and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Persesites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations. See, oh, now this is even more. This is to a bigger cosmic level now. Remember, before they was bowing down seven days. Morning, seven days. It was personal. Now the number seven is taken to a, I, believe, I can't say cause because it's, it's still been off the planet Earth. It was taken to a more national level. Seven nations greater and stronger than you. He's going to get, did to take out these seven nations to inhabit the land of Canaan. So that's to a world or a national level. Not just a personal thing anymore. Seven nations that were going to be uh, subdued by the Israelite people. Going to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. Here we go. They will come out against you one way. And they will flee before you in seven ways. So. I was going to do some math on this. I was going to say 306 degrees, you know, for a full circle, divided by seven, and give you that number. But I don't have a calculator, so you can do that. You can make it more mathematical, but they can run seven ways in any direction, but they still run it on that in a, in a circular fashion. This, again, is taking on a national level. Not bowing down, not more than I'm going to make the nations. Your enemies, when they run, when they flee, they're not going to run towards your back. They're not going to run in the opposite direction. No, I'm making them scatter. They're going to run in seven different directions. That's big. That means you terrify when you do that. This is coming from Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. For seven women will take, now again, it's a personal level now. For seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our bread, we will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. See, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Seven women are going to marry one man. 
They said, we will take your name. And you know what that means. If the, especially here in the Western world. If the woman going to take your name, that means she's going to be your wife. And this is a this is a prophecy for the future. So this is a future event here. Seven women, the number seven, will find one man, and they will say, we all, without no fighting, we all will be your wife. See, a lot of people don't, they don't want to hear that. In the Bible, you can have more than one wife, but here's the catch. Can you afford to have more than one wife? If you can't afford multiple wives, you, just, you better just stick with your one wife. Oh, now we jump into the New Testament. It's coming from Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits. So now we jump into the spiritual world now. We're leaving our universe. We're leaving our galaxy. We're leaving even the planet Earth. We are, we're leaving even this physical world. Now we jump into the spiritual world. Then it goes and take along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. So even the evil spirits, even they hold the number seven with some reverence. And they go in and live there. And the last day of that man becomes worse than the first. Because now instead of having one demon, one evil spirit, he has seven. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. So this generation right here, not one wickedness, no, but seven evil things will befall it, which we have seen today. But the main thing, people, is even in the spirit world, like you see here with my uh, a little picture, this animal, the amalgamation, has seven heads, seven evil spirits. They even value the number seven. Even the demons. So that's it, my good people. They are, hold up. Now, I only showed you several scriptures on the number seven days. Up. There was plenty of them. There was a massive amount. I only gave you seven. But we see from this simple little lesson how important that number seven is in the Bible. And it's not even that's important when it's dealing with human events like mourning. Bowing, weeping, crying. No, it did with higher level events like Nash nations. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this nation. Your enemy is gonna flee in seven directions. So it's just not at a personal level. It go to a national or even a planet wide level, even to the spirit world and to the relationship realm. You remember I said earlier, the wives, seven women, going to take one man and be called by his name. In the last scripture, I believe, in the spiritual world, the demon said, I'm not going to get one demon making it to you. I'm not going to get three or four. No, he said, I'm going to get seven to make sure you cannot overcome us. So thank you for stopping by, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for putting on my heart to go over. How you like math? Yes. God loves math. You made the math. You made the universe. You have the special number seven. To you, Lord, is special because that's the day when you finish the creative process. Thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To the next time, people who love the living God, peace.